Paleontology News Today Did dinosaurs hibernate during the Triassic and Jurassic periods? The climate on Earth was warmer and wetter than it is now, and the entire landmass was not very far from the equator. Therefore, there was no need for dinosaurs to hibernate. Later in the Cretaceous, the continents began to diverge farther apart, and Antarctica began to move toward the South Pole. At the end of the Cretaceous, the Earth's climate began to change, and the differences between summer and winter temperatures became more and more pronounced. Cretaceous winters were not as harsh as they are now, but temperatures could still drop to zero degrees Celsius. At that temperature, cold-blooded reptiles like the dinosaurs got very cold, so it is very likely that they hibernated to stay warm. The Permian mass extinction was the largest in Earth's history. Extinction. Scientists have found a fossilized herd of lystrosaurs, small herbivorous animals that literally dried up under the rays of the drying sun. The site of the tragedy is called the Karoo Basin. The animals turned into real mummies. Incredibly. But this allowed to preserve not only the skeletons, but also the soft tissues of one of the few animals that survived the world catastrophe. A mummy of an animal from the Triassic? I can't believe it, but I'd have to check it out. Hey, anyone from Africa? Can you please confirm this information? Pterosaur feathers were not for flying. Scientists have found the remains of a pterosaur. You say, what's so surprising? It turns out that pterosaurs had feathers not for flight, but for beauty. Feathers of the animal differed in structure. Some feathers were relatively short, simple and similar to wool, while others were longer and more developed. Scientists found in them fossilized traces of melanosomes, special organoids that provide coloration of the animal. And it turned out that different feathers were colored differently, and these feathers had no effect on the speed or maneuvers of flight. A, a pig the size of a bear. This pig appeared in the Pliocene four million years ago. Nodokoer was a super pig, a big boar that reached up to two meters in length and ate up to 450 kilos. Just for a second, that's the size of a modern brown bear. With this size, Nodokoer became one of the largest boars in the history of the planet. Giant fangs were necessary for the predator, who tried to hunt this huge boar, had a heart attack and died of his own accord. But fortunately for the local fauna, this monster was a vegetarian, and the threat came from him only to trespassers of his territory. A speedy crocodile that lived 200 million years ago, meet Necrosaurus, the ancestor of modern crocodiles. Once he swam in lakes and patiently waited for prey, but then he suddenly decided that he could walk on land, got out, and walked, or rather, ran. He ran so fast that he overtook the surprised prey. The prey died not from fear, but rather from laughter. The Kronosaurus felt in himself superpowers and decided to conquer the land. Now he hid not under water, but in the bushes, waiting for his prey. Then lightning jumped out and left no chance for his victim. This animal had two kinds of teeth, one for fishing, the other for land hunting. Even dinosaurs, which at that time were still small and weak, became prey for the Necrosaurus. A bear dog has been discovered in France. Have you ever met an animal called an amphition? In reality, of course not. This incredible species became extinct 1.5 million years ago. A terrifying hybrid of bear and dog, it was a terrifying predator in the late Miocene. Amphition had the largest representatives of this family, such as Amphition giganteus, which weighed more than 700 kilo and was the size of a polar bear. The famous Amphition igensis weighed 500 kilo and was three meter long. Paleontologists have described a new species of bear dog, or dog bear, that lived in what is now France about 12 million years ago. Scientists named it Tartazion Saza Navy for its previously unseen size. Researchers estimated the animal's mass at about 195 kilograms. Hmm, not much. But this amphition was considered large on the European continent. Dinosaurs could catch a cold and die. The most powerful and healthy theropod could catch a cold in the wind and die. Such a conclusion was made by scientists after they found in the remains of a variety of dinosaurs traces of infections carried by ancient animals. Ancient fossils, just like humans, could have contracted a respiratory disease. Or maybe they had their own pandemic. It's entirely possible. Dinosaurs couldn't wear masks and give themselves vaccines. They didn't keep their distance. They couldn't heal. But they certainly had treatment. If you look at modern animals, 
you'll see that they treat their illnesses with a variety of useful herbs, even carnivores. But dinosaurs couldn't wrap scarves and wear warm slippers, so their mortality rate was very high. Ancient owls hunted during the day. China continues to amaze the world community with the remains of completely unexpected ancient creatures. Researchers reported finding a perfectly preserved skeleton of a small owl, apparently characterized by daytime activity. Analysis of the skeleton supports the hypothesis that this extinct owl led a primarily diurnal lifestyle. This fossil skeleton turns our ideas about the evolution of owls upside down. It means that scientists will soon be announcing that the ancient world was a very different place, with the result that owls gave up night hunting for fun in the sun. The Mayans knew about Megalodon. American paleontologist revealed the secret of one of the mythical monsters of the Mayan pantheon. Sea monster Sipakli, from which, according to the Maya, the gods created the heavens, earth, and hell worlds, is directly related to the famous shark Megalodon. This is not the first time that fossils have been associated with one mythological story or another. Shark teeth are quite widely represented in the mythology of different parts of the world. In Japan, they were mistaken for the nails of a mountain goblin, and in Malta, for snake tongues. According to legend, one of the snakes bit the Apostle Paul, and he cursed all the snakes on the island, depriving them of their ability to produce poison. As a result, fossilized shark teeth became popular in Europe as an amulet against poisonous snakes. By the way, in Switzerland, the teeth of extinct sharks were also used as amulets, supposedly to relieve pain when a child was teething. If the asteroid had not wiped out the dinosaurs, could this dominant link have become intelligent like humans? Could the dinosaurs have learned to use tools and even learned to walk upright? Could they have grown big brains and invented cars, smartphones, and space rockets? And actually, what would the dinosaurs have been like if they hadn't been killed by an asteroid? It all sounds like the plot of a sci-fi movie of dubious quality. But scientists did ask themselves these questions and drew some conclusions. Over millions of years, dinosaurs never showed an increase in brain volume. This is evidenced by their skulls. In the end, it turns out that the dinosaurs that survived the asteroid impact would have looked the same. No dramatic changes would have occurred, and crocodiles have not gotten smarter in millions of years. What will people look like in the 3,000 years? A person's lifestyle directly affects their appearance. The distant ancestors of man had to go hunting and collecting plants every day. This required physical effort, so they had strong bodies with developed muscles. Today, people are much less likely to do manual labor spend less time outdoors, and have easy access to unhealthy foods. The result is that today's men and women have weak muscles and are also at risk of suffering the consequences of gaining excess weight. On top of that, modern humans spend dozens of hours in front of smartphones and computers every day. Meet Mindy, a person of the future who frequently uses a smartphone. Aviathyron is a Jurassic monster. The full name of this dinosaur is Aviatoranus jurassica. This predator was one of the ancestors of Tyrannosaurus, a small carnivorous hunter, only one and a half meters long, because all Tyrannosaur ancestors were small. With the name was a cruel joke. For some reason, many translated as flying tyrant, which is completely wrong, and no one is not confused that this dinosaur has neither wings nor feathers nor a personal airplane. The species name was given by scientists with the intended meaning in mind. Here's the exact translation. Grandmother of the Jurassic Tyrant. The common name comes from the Latin avia, grandmother, and the name Tyrannosaurus, tyrant. Avia Tyrannus is one of the oldest Tyrannosaurids ever found. The oldest of these is Proceratosaurus. How did dinosaurs shed their skin? And now scientists have discovered another peculiarity in the life of the inhabitants of the Mesozoic era, molting or shedding of old skin. Unlike snakes, lizards, and other reptiles, which often shed their old skin all at once, feathered dinosaurs lost, their dead skin in small fragments in much the same way as modern birds and mammals do. In the middle of the Jurassic period, dinosaurs acquired a skin renewal mechanism different from reptiles and adapted to the presence of feathers. In case you didn't know, skin is shed by many living things on Earth, even humans. Don't believe me? Take a look at your heels. Did you like the video? Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already.
and hit the bell to not miss new and interesting releases from the channel.